All right, so let's just get this going. So first of all, I want to thank uh, 3D BioCAD for inviting me to do this presentation. Uh, I've been doing these presentations since I basically joined the company. Most of them have been in Spanish. I handled Latin America for Sprint Rate. I'm in charge of the accounts uh, throughout Latin America and in the US I have uh, a little bit of responsibility with the lab segment. But nevertheless, uh, 3D BioCAD has been a good supporter of uh, Sprint Ray. I've known uh, the people from 3D BioCAD for probably four or five years since my, um, my position with Roland. So just to give you a little bit of background on, on who I am and, and what I'm doing and why I do this, I graduated from dental school in Brazil in 1987. I moved to the US in 1991. I had a dental supply company for 13 years, which I later sold to Henry Schein. I worked for them for a while. I had a contract. Um, after that, I stayed with Dent Supply Serona. In the implant division, I stayed with uh, 3i Biomet, which is now called Zimmer. I also worked for 3M uh, Oral Care Division with their intraoral scanner. And after that, I joined Roland. So the, the last five, six years of my professional career, I've been involved with CAD CAM. So it, it's a good place for me to be uh, with 3D printing. I think that's the hot and, and interesting uh, part of CAD CAM that uh, everybody wants to, to hear about. So why we're talking about digital dentistry and 3D printing. And, and if we go back a little bit uh, in, in time, um, Digital dentistry became kind of noticeable with uh, people ordering the, the sensors, x-ray sensors, right? I think nobody knew anything about, I think probably that's one of the first applications that you had in your office that would require a computer other than uh, patient management. And, and I think back then people would do the math saying, well, you know, I can buy a box of x-ray for x-ray film for twenty twenty five dollars why should i spend seven thousand eight thousand dollars on a sensor and if you do the math this way you'll never come up with the right number because there's much more than just you know uh trading dollars for images uh, and the same way that we talk about um scanners i mean and, and chuck is here and and probably the best person to talk about 3d uh, about scanning but again you know when, when people do the math and say well why should I buy a scanner? You know, an impression cost me 20 bucks, a scanner cost me $25,000, $30,000. It's going to take me, you know, 500 impressions, 1,000 impressions for me to, you know, to more than 1,000 impressions, 1,500 impressions for me to pay for a scanner. And when we do the math like this, the math doesn't uh, add up because we cannot just do this type of math. We have to understand what technology is bringing to us besides, you know, replacing, you know, analogic impression with, uh, with a digital impression. So while we do things digitally now, and, and I think it's a combination of things, um, we have to, you know, look into what it does for our practice, what it does for the patient. And when we talk about practice, not necessarily just practice, but also dental labs. But uh, at the end of the day, what we want to do is, you know, work better, have better clinical results, have patients more um, satisfied with the treatment because we can do it faster, we can do it better. And, and at the end of the day, we, as, as uh, people in the dental industry, if you have a lab or a doctor, we want to make more money, right? I mean, I, I've never met anybody says, no, I want to make less money. I'm making too much money. I should not be making as much money as I'm making now. Um, as long as we are ethical and providing good services, there's nothing wrong in, in being profitable and, uh, and making money. So real quick, the intro was basically just um, a little bit of, so let's do this from the point. Okay, so we talked about scanners, intraoral scanners, extraoral scanners, technology, and why the, DL, the, uh, the printer is the most affordable uh, and, and the one that you can get the faster return on investment. That's the workflow, and I apologize uh, if I had known you couldn't see it, I would have obviously stopped. But again, workflow from patient intraoral scanning, creating the STL file, design software, creates the STL file for the object that you're printing, and then you can produce this in the office or lab. 
The other workflow is when somebody doesn't have the intraoral scanner, they'll take the conventional impression, send it to the lab. The lab will then create the model, scan the model with the tabletop scanner, and then we'll design the software and uh, design, I'm sorry, design the object. And that, at that point, either the lab makes the object or sends the file back to the, the doctor and the doctor is going to print it in the office. So the printing technology is LCD. Um, it is a screen. Imagine your phone trying to cure um, the intensity of the light of your phone, trying to, to, to cure resin. S, uh, SLA, which is the form labs, you go dot by dot, right? So it's a much slower technology, right? And, and actually, it's the only company that uses that technology. If you look at all the other 3D printer machines in the market, at least in dental, uh, there's no other company that uses SLA technology, just form labs. And then the OP technology, which is a very powerful light source that will cure that layer. So so basically, you have DOP, SLA very slow, and LCD. So the platform goes up. New layer of resin comes uh, in in between the tank and the platform. New layer is cured, and the process goes on and on and on until a new object is printed. So everything that you'll see in this presentation, every clinical case was uh, produced either with a pro or a moon ray. These were, uh, these are the products that we make. The moon ray, um, we finish our production. We do not sell that anymore. We just show cases that we have with moon ray. In case somebody has a moon ray and wants to upgrade to a pro, they understand the differences. And mostly, the difference will be in the size of the platform. Uh, obviously, pro is a much bigger platform, bigger capacity, but also using a little bit different technology in the way the platform moves in the tank. So it makes also that machine faster. And again, so you can understand the speed and capacity, right? The Pro will be our current model, faster and, and bigger production. So we talked about clear aligners and, and, and the big benefit of doing that, uh, not only is the control on the case, um, for those of you that have the trios, um, three shape has a software for orthodontics. If you don't want to get involved in the design phase, 3D BioCAD offers design uh, um, services to you. So you don't have to be buying a new license or buying software or, or taking the time to do that. 3D BioCAD can do that very, very easily for you. But the process is very simple. Once you submit the case, upper, lower, and bite, they will then uh, put it through the software. The software will then make the necessary, uh, create the necessary bumps and attachments so that you can have intrusion, extrusion, rotation, and all the movements uh, that uh, an aligner can do. So we, and we explained this clearly. We, we're not printing the aligners. There's no uh, aligner brand in the market that's printed. Basically, everybody, including the most expensive ones, We'll print the model and then through the uh, vacuum form, a thermal form, we'll uh, then have the suck down, uh, create the, the aligner. And just one more time, showing the capacity, if you were to do the models on for an aligner case on a pro, you can fit probably 25, 26 of those models uh, in one batch versus the moon ray, about 10, 11, 12, sometimes if you're lucky. And uh, again, if you're not orthodontist, I would recommend going with a pro. If your lab, go with a pro. Um, the moon ray is not available anymore, so it's, it's a moot point to talk about it. But uh, again, the, the pro uh, is, is by far one of the most popular machines now in the market. Once we, we talk about the other ones in the competition, you'll, you'll understand in terms of capacity, price, and speed. But cost, about $2.49 to print a model. So imagine that a case has 10 aligners, so uh, 10 up or 10 lower. So we have 20 models, roughly $50 in production cost in materials. Um, the fee to design could vary between 150, 175, $180. So for maybe $250, you have a case that you can offer your patients. The benefits against Invisalign clearly, number one, the cost 
the profit for you if you decide to sell that at the same price you would sell the Invisalign cost, the Invisalign product. Uh, much bigger profit for you if you want to discount that and make it more affordable for more patients by all means that would be a, a great thing for you as, as as a practice owner but it's very re reliable easy to do simple you can print that yourself and for a low cost for less than maybe 250 dollars you can have that uh, as, as cost for you to to offer to your patients this is strictly for orthodontists. Um, a few of them that use it love it. Again, this is a Trios uh, case where scan was submitted. The brackets were placed digitally on the surface on the buckle. Then we create this this transfer tray. Basically, is to create space for the brackets, so you can go to the mouth and take all the brackets in one shot and bond them. So you have this is the printed tray. You have the assistant loading the brackets on the on the transfer tray and you go to the mouth in one shot everything is in position you don't have to be adjusting making the, the fine adjustments of you know more cervical more incisal more mesial distal twisting brackets and you can print this for three dollars so imagine what is the benefit for uh, anybody doing this is you can have patient in and out of your dental chair much much faster in case you're an orthodontist and, and you want to use this technique for um, for bonding brackets um, additional inventions this is a customer of ours from venezuela he's an orthodontist and he realized it was hard to bond brackets to uh, porcelain crowns so he developed this to avoid etching or sandblasting the whole porcelain crown this is this way i just will have the etching or um the roughening of of the crown where i want to have my bracket position and and that's another application surgical guys obviously we all know what these are but um just go beyond just what surgical gu guides um are are uh, used for now we have this case from dr domingue where he's not gonna only he's not gonna just do a or use a surgical guide but he also created osteotomy guide basically the idea is for you to level the bone to make it more predictable for the restoration again implant guide we all know what this is that's the money shot the implants were placed parallel and makes it more predictable as as the end result for whoever is going to restore the case um, this is even a bigger case where a patient comes in uh, on the left side the upper bridge is probably failing actually he already failed uh, the decision was to replace these with implants so again during uh, planning phase they decide to go with six implants combining cone beam uh, and respecting occlusion, now we have to decide, okay, where are we gonna put these implants? Obviously we have to find bone for that, but also understanding, hey, now we have also to restore, how are we gonna make it um, easy for us and, 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 and predictable so we have a good outcome respecting the occlusal and, and, uh, and the opposing arch. So the nice thing about this case is a 3D printer was used for three purposes, it was used to print the provisionals was used for the surgical guide but also something unique which is the positioning guide and basically the idea of this positioning guide is once you have the provisional in place the implants in place and you're going to reline to pick up all the prosthetic components and, and then have it screw retained at least during the healing phase patient is probably um, under sedation is not going to be very easy for the patient to bite and keep this in occlusion so the pickup acrylic will set so this can be done in a way where uh, more predictable you don't have any uh, variation any movement of this restorative uh, prosthesis of this uh, provisional prosthesis and this would be the outcome of using this technology and then have this as your uh, provisional while you have osteointegration. Uh, Perisurgical guides, also easy to understand and see what they are and very um, helpful when you're trying to do, let's say, static cases, gingivectomy, and you wanna make sure that the left side and the right side are in harmony. 
and symmetrical. Obviously doing it freehanded would be much, much harder. And, and this also can be used in combination with a cone beam to determine if you're gonna do crown lengthening. This, uh, there will be a, t a different guide, but then again, um, it's, it's you already know where you're gonna finish even before you know um, having a flap. Again, surgical guides, very, very economical, very easy to print, about $2.50. Uh, not including the design, but again, you can talk to your lab, you can talk to 3D BioCAD, they can design this for you, and you can be um, utilizing this technology and printing these in your own office. Mocap and static cases, again, this is a case from a customer of ours in, in Colombia. He worked with uh, Dr. Guarnieri in Brazil using skin concept. Um, Brazil has a lot of talented clinicians that develop many, many techniques, DSD from Coachman from Brazil. Uh, there's clones from Paulo Cano, also from Brazil, and Skin Concept is from uh, Livio. So patient comes in, she was not happy, and uh, basically saying, well, uh, I don't like my smile. So how do you convince a patient to spend, you know, $15,000, $20,000, $25,000 on 10 veneers uh, without showing them what's going to look like. So they designed the case in computer. You've all done that probably with stone models and wax ups. Uh, but now you can design the case and print the, the model, the mock-up, have um, the putty delivered that to the patient and have approval with either any type of BGMA, could be integrity, could be lux attempt. Then the veneers are, were milled again uh, and placed on a 3D model. This is the patient at the time when she's leaving the office uh, with the gingivectomy and the, I believe was lasered because uh, we see a little bit of the, uh, there's hardly any bleeding. A week later, you have patient come for pictures and very predictable. Now you have the direct mock-up where you design the case based on the smile and this was done I believe with also three shape where patient comes in she's not happy she or he is not happy uh, this I believe was used uh, using DSD to create a new smile you design this new smile you can print that new smile and you can go to the mouth and bond it with maybe a, a, a little drop of flow composite, obviously no etching, and now you use the emotional component of the patient to get approval. Now, if there's any modifications needed, if you need, uh, let's say the canine a little bit shorter, you can make the adjustment, you can scan that again, and the new scan goes against the old scan, and then you can, uh, from that point, do two things. Number one, you can mill, Let's say if you're using Emacs CAD, you can mill because now you already have the design of, of every uh, veneer. Or if you want to cast, no problem. You can then reprint the, the same uh, mock-up, but on castable resin and have it uh, pressed. And the cost for doing this, uh, printing cost is $3. So very easy, very quick, and very predictable. Crown and bridge models, we all know what these are. Uh, but the most exciting thing that we have, at least uh, since I put together this slide, was uh, not only we can do provisional crowns, now we have materials to do permanent crowns that are printed. So obviously much faster than um, milling, much faster than uh, using any other type of lab technology to create a, a permanent crown. Night guards, very easy to understand. Again, Designing a night guard, probably seven, eight, nine minutes, and that's it. You have the machine that printing that for 20, 30 minutes, but the printing time is not your time doing this. And, and even for a lab technician, there's no way a lab technician can produce a night guard in seven minutes, but you can design it in seven minutes and then have the machine do the work for you. There's a new product in the market from Keystone. It's a soft material and unique. Uh, and it's available uh, to be used with our printers, and we're going to cover that uh, a little bit later. But again, very easy, and now you can do the math. Okay, um, you'd probably pay $25, $35, $40 for a design. Cost of producing this could be from $2 to $5. So for less than $60, bucks, let us say, you have a splint. 
I don't know how much you would charge that's plain to your customers, but then again, you start compiling the number of applications that you could have done in office. So maybe one or two of these a month, a couple of cases of aligners a month, and then you realize, well, I could be paying for this machine very quickly without even putting money out of my pocket because all these procedures I already have. Printing time is 32 minutes on a pro with um, with our splint material. Key splint soft is a little bit longer printing time, but nevertheless, that's printing time that machine is, is, is taking, not time from you doing it. Digital dentures, I believe maybe uh, a prosthodontist would, would like to do that. Uh, doctors usually don't want to mess with this, but again, very easy, very predictable. We've seen doctors um, use this technique as, hey, I'll give the patient two dentures because the time that it takes to print one, I can print the second one, right? The only time I spend, the design, design time is only once to design the denture and m multiply that denture two, three times. It, the time to design is, is, is only once. Bonding the teeth to the denture, probably 20 minutes, polishing another 10. So in 30 minutes of analog time, you can have a denture. So the second denture will take just 30 minutes more uh, because the design is, is, is the same. So we have doctors offering two uh, dentures. As a backup, patients sometimes they go to the beach, they're in the ocean, they lose their dentures, they're skydiving, they lose the dentures. We've seen videos, they're funny, but you understand. Um, anything that happens to the first denture, the patient is already with the second set of dentures um, in, in the drawer and ready to go. Um, dentures, sometimes people say, well, they, they, they don't have any life, they're dull and Okay, that's a matter of preference. You can go with a denture that was printed and just polished, as you see on the left, or you can really put a lot of talent, just like um, this is a personal friend from Brazil, Renata. She is a world-renowned technician. She had won several awards, but she can really make anything very, very pretty and very aesthetic. Again, cases from her. Left side is simply polished, right side has a characterization. This, if, if I'm not mistaken, is a product from Ivo Clark called Nesco. The cost of doing a denture in, in, in material is $10.50. I mean, there's no way a lab technician would spend hours and hours, you know, with wax and, and um, stone and acrylic, and it's it's, is not rewarding, let's put it this way. So digital comes in, in, in help for, um, to, to make this more affordable for lab technician and also in terms of time, right? Because uh, there's no way you, you could, you know, do this quickly enough to be profitable. Um, so digital makes it much easier, much, um, much more predictable for them. Clients also, you can make them very pretty. Again, she's very talented. Um, she probably, this, this is to show off. Uh, I don't think uh, clients come that pretty nowadays, but again, uh, depending on the type of uh, practice you have or the type of patient you have, you can do this as, as a, your trying phase. Prosthesis over implants, we all know what these are. This is another case where it was printed. We have all the uh, <clears throat> The attachments, so this is screw retained provisional uh, while the implants are healing, are osteo integrating, and again, you can put a lot of talent and make it really pretty. Castable restorations, that's mostly for dental labs, but uh, the wax up now are digital. We print them, we don't have to use wax for that. Uh, you can do several cases very quickly nowadays. Removable is also a prosthetic. Uh, or lab procedure, lab application. And new applications now with COVID, we've seen a lot of people do uh, print masks, print these um, uh, aspirators that can be attached to a leap retractor. What's important also, Rayware software, and, and why, why we like the, the, this product, this specific uh, feature that we have. We just launched what we call pixel toning, and um, in order for us to make the surface 
nicer and smoother on 100 layers uh, because when you print, you can print them at 50 uh, micron layers or 100. Obviously, 100, it's faster, but you see the differences between the layers, right? They have about 100 micron difference. You know, they look like steps. With this technology that we developed called Pixotony, you have the surface as smooth as probably 25 to 30 micron. So the models look nicer, they fit better, and this is unique. I mean, uh, we don't know of any other company that has this technology on their software. Ludicrous speed, that's also something we came up. These are, um, this is a speed that will print in 175 microns, so a little bit bigger steps. But for aligner cases, we've realized that you can print them faster and not uh, affecting the quality of the, of, of the final product. So just to give an idea how easy it is to use this software. Basically, we have features where let's say for doctors that have a scanner and patient comes in and says, hey, I'd like to have a bleaching tray, right? Um, you're not going to pull alginate and you have a scanner. You pay thousands of dollars for a scanner. Why would you use alginate, right? So you can scan that, mod, uh, that patient. You don't have to use any special software to convert that scan into a model, into a printed model or a printable model. Right? You don't have to use 3Shape, ExoCAD, Mesh Mixers, none of that. With one click, you're going to convert that scan, which is basically a shell. Uh, the software will understand that it's open, uh, the mesh is open, so uh, it's telling you if you try to print like this, it's going to fail because, again, it's not a model, it's not printable. And then you can transform that scan into a model just with one click. Uh, it takes about 15 seconds, 20 seconds, here you go. Now I can print this, and now from this, I can also have a suck down and create a bleaching tray. But let's say, well, this is going to take 21 milliliters in about 38 minutes. I can change the plane cut and make that model a little bit shorter, which will benefit me in two ways. Number one, because it's shorter, it takes less time to print. And number two, because it, it takes less material, it's going to save me some money in, in cost. So again, with one click, no special software, I'm going to convert that model that would take 21 milliliters into a model that takes now 12 milliliters and it's going to reduce the printing time to 28 minutes, right? So very easy to understand, very simple to, to use the software. Now let's say, okay, let's uh, talk about a surgical guide. If I had to print a surgical guide, how would that go? You can drag and drop. This would be on the platform of a Pro 95. If you have a, a, a Moonray, that would be the platform. So just showing the difference for those that have a Moonray and want to upgrade. Pro being faster and bigger, you can fit more objects at the same time. But again, very intuitive, generate supports. It should, and this is real time. This video is not doctored, uh, is not uh, faster than what it was uh, produced. So you can edit the supports. You can go from underneath. You can see where you want to support. You can remove them. You can add them with one click. Again, I usually recommend stay with what the software brought, but you have the capabilities of changing anything you want. This would take six milliliters of resin in 34 minutes. If I had an S100, it would take, obviously, it's the same amount of resin, but longer printing time. That would be 43 minutes. If I have multiple objects and I want to put more on the platform, I can turn this object and put it vertical. Now, remember, because it's printing in layers and every time the platform goes up and down, it comes down a little bit less and gives space for more resin. So it's building from the bottom of the tank up. So now this object on a Pro 95 would take an hour and 22 minutes. And you see the amount of space that I have on this platform. And finally, on the software. One of the things that we've done is we partner with so many different resin manufacturers. We have probably more than 30 available options now that can be used. So within the Sprint Ray family, we have seven or eight. We're launching a new resin that's 
uh, odorless. With Nextend, we have also a variety of um, options. With Denka, we have denture teeth. We have crown and bridge, which are provisional resins for restorations. We have denture base. With Keystone, we have the soft spleen material. With Bagel, we have permanent crowns. That's Verseo crown and Verseo temp. And with Drevi, also we have guide for surgical guides and indirect bonding tray. The beauty of working with this software is that you're not uh, limited to using only the resins that the manufacturer, the printer manufacturer makes. Um, if you go with Form Labs, if you go with Nextend, you're really kind of locked into using uh, the resins that they have. And finally, uh, post curing, which is a very important step. Uh, a lot of people uh, neglect it. Uh, because they say, well, you know, the resin, the, the model came hard from the platform. I just washed it with alcohol and I'm done. Why should I, pro uh, why should I post cure it? Um, because the resin is not fully cured at, you know, the last layers. Obviously, we understand it's a combination of time and temperature. So we have a very powerful machine, large capacity, 90 watts. We have temperature control. Very intuitive. All the, all the materials that we have. In our setup for printing, we have also, in, with the push of one button, they're all set up for post-cure. But what's important and why we talk about it is this is a study from Dr. Brennis comparing the nail salon, which some people feel like, well, I can buy something for 50 bucks and, and it was going to work, versus pay, paying for something that is a professional machine like, like the Procure. And the main difference is this. As, as we all know, wavelength is an important portion of, of curing resin. So when doing the study, he realized, okay, if I have a Procure, I have the 402, which is basically the 405 uh, nanometers, and that's the curing light, the, the blue light that we use for curing composites. And I have, with a Procure, I have over 0 0.25 milliwatt by square centimeter. With the nail salon, I have less than two. I mean, that's the orange line at the 405 wavelength. So basically, you're not doing anything. The risk also of using these uh, non-professional curing lights is temperature. The, the maximum temperature needed to cure a resin is about 45 degrees, which uh, is reached in about 20 minutes of curing time. If you get these nail salon, they get up to 80 degrees celsius that's uh, very very hot you can burn yourself but also there's a change in um dimension obviously with with the heat there's change in the resistance of the material you're altering the the the, the properties of the material and it can get as high as almost 90 so it's almost boiling water so obviously not recommended i mean you spend money buying a good printer, you spend money buying a good scanner, and then um, you try to save money on, on a light curing on the post-processing. That's really not the best way of, of doing uh, business. And so you have the Moonray, which obviously for those that had one, uh, time to upgrade for a Pro. For those that are looking into uh, printing, the Pro 95 is what we currently have. The sizes, again, uh, for those that had one to compare with the other one, capacity, but also understanding what's out there in the market. The, the only machine that has a platform that's similar to ours is the Form 3. Uh, you see on the second line, they have 35.2 square inches of size versus 31, but look at the speed. We can print up to two inches per hour and they print 0 0.15 inches per hour. So it's a very slow, remember the laser curing point by point. And this is just uh, a picture of something being printed with the formula up to uh, 11 hours and 22 minutes. Basically you go home, uh, you come back the next day and you still have work uh, being printed in the machine. And again, good machines in the market, the closer, but again, 9.4 inch square inches of, of a build platform, very, very small. Same speed, but again, you're limited by the resins. You can only use the DEMA resins versus ours. We have the Sprint Ray, the Next End, Denka, Drevi. We're missing the Keystone in this list and the Bagel. And again, the price difference again, that's uh, something you have to consider 17,000 versus 6550. 
Planmeca Creo again, small platform. Atsiga, very small platform, 12 square inches, twice the price. Uh, Envision Tech, you're limited to Envision Tech resin only. Uh, $30,000, very expensive printer, very small printer, eight inches. Envision Tech One, uh, big platform, almost as big as ours, uh, twice as much uh, in price, but also limited in, you can only use Envision Tech resin. So. Um, you don't want to be hostage to a company that says no. Uh, if you don't buy our resin, then you cannot use our printer. And the vocal also very, very small. And I don't recommend anybody printing like this. This is just, uh, we do this for conventions, so people stop and say, holy cow, I mean, how long did it take to print this and how much resin did you use? But there's a universe of things that you can do with 3D printing in dental. Uh, outside of dan dentistry as well, but um, there's very few things, very few specialties that um, you cannot find an application that a 3D printer can help in your office.